How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Vince, and this is Leah. We are the Afterlife Collective, and today on the show, we are joined by Josh from Grey Castle Podcast. So mm -hmm. uh, just real quick, we're going to have Josh kind of do a quick rundown of uh, how he's involved with uh, Sean over at Grey Castle. So take it away, Josh. I am a researcher and a storyteller for Grey Castle Podcast. I just I started out just doing... Um, just doing research and just putting together stories for him and material for him. And then eventually I just got into telling, telling the stories, getting involved with that. So that's what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty free, free spirit about it. So right. whatever, whatever happens, happens. So and you're like, like a, uh, historical kind of a research, uh, contributor for the podcast. Yeah, basically. you bet. You know, we, okay. we try to throw in as much as, uh, uh, history into it, but we basically right. just, it's just stories, you know, like, um, yeah. um, personal accounts, right. true stuff like that. Okay. So. Now, interestingly enough, Leah has yes. known Sean from Grey Castle Podcast <laughs> for a long time, probably yeah, as long as you have. Oh, at least. he's known him for a minute. Yeah. yeah. So he's it, at it, least 16 or 17 when I first met him. Yeah. The whole so. thing's weird. It's like <laughs> in a weird way, we all knew each other, you know, for going back almost 30 years now. Uh, yeah. In one way or another. But anyways, Leah, how do you know Sean from Grey Castle Podcast? Well, you know, years ago, I was, you know, production manager to start with, I guess, uh, for um, the uh, the 88.5 KYSE FM. The which, college The rock college station. Rise, rock station, yeah. Right. And uh, surprisingly enough, I used to, you know, I was training Sean years ago nice. on the on the master board so you know it's like whenever everybody kept saying oh Sean's got this really cool podcast and everything you got to check it out and everything and I was like oh that's cool he did something with with his education because I <laughs> yeah, definitely really cool. didn't really do anything with it so so out of out of uh basically all the kids that went to the college radio station he pretty much kind of he picked it up and actually you know yeah did something with it doing yeah something. Well, we, well, I think his brother did too, because his brother was in class also. So, right. and I think his brother did something too. So, we have to admit, we live in a really cool day and age where we can sit just at our dining room table and do something like this and yeah. have the potential <laughs> for millions of people to listen to us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, very humbling. Yeah. Where 30 years ago, we could just scream at clouds. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, today's episode, if anybody's watching, we hope you are. Um, we're going to basically just go over, since we've introduced ourselves, you all have uh, been introduced to me and Leah in the past already. Uh, we're basically going to go over like probably our top paranormal experience that we've had in the past. Um, we, I'm sure like a lot of you out there, you probably have experiences where you have more than one if you're a believer of this sort of thing, but this one's kind of just covering the, uh, our top experience that we've had, the one that kind of sticks out the most to us. So, uh, I'm going to let Josh take it away since he's the guest on the show and just let him have a, have a first call on the story. Well, I could say that, um, most of the reason, I mean, like most of us, what got me into the paranormal was, um, you know, movies, you know, that I would say that's the the spark but um like i was saying earlier to you um i uh, actually got into the literature part of it of um actually understanding it a little bit more was um when i was um when i was when i was a kid i was really big into that nightmares and dreamscapes right so it was uh it was a uh, it, it just opened my mind to a whole different story but the, my actual my actual main um I would say my main story would isn't my personal account. It was um, I was just like 12, 13 years old, and um, we were living over uh, with a friend of ours, and he came just in a in a quick uh, quick overview about it. it. He just came. He was banging on his door, and I that's how I woke up. And he came running out of his out of his uh, bedroom, and he was covered in sweat in his his wife beater was just ripped to shreds. He was bl bloody all over and right. he was very panicked. Yeah. And, uh, he came to my dad's door and he banged on the door and my dad came out, you know, and, and the guy was cussing at him. Like, what were you doing in my room? And my dad's like, yeah, you're not in my, I wasn't in my room, dude. You mm -hmm. know? So, so they, he was like, let me grab my smokes and we'll, we'll have a quick go at it. You know, you can tell me what's going on. And, so they were out in the, on the porch telling the story, and this guy's saying that he he was uh, he, he rolled a joint with the back of the Bible papers, as you do, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so, again, I mean, he couldn't find any papers around the house, so that's that was his go-to. And so he rolled it up, and, and a couple hours later, after a shower, he's laying in bed, and and uh, he heard a commotion. He was laying on his side, and he heard a commotion, and, and he saw this black shadow with red eyes, and, a, and he could see the, the cigarette draw. Right. You'd get it up to his face, and you can see the smoke coming out. You can smell the smoke, and and so this, then, this was like a genuine, like a guy standing in the room. Yeah, like that's what he thought. Version of this guy, right? Like he, he, that's that's what made him bang on my dad's door because he yeah. he lit, he thought it was my dad, right? And so he was like, "Dude, leave me alone. I'm sleeping." Yeah, you know. And so he uh, he went to roll back over, and whatever was in that in that corner, man, shoved him back on his bed on his back. Started ripping the crap out of his out of his chest, yeah. And he fought it off and ran to the door and started banging on the door and screaming. And that's when I woke up, right. And that's how the, my story started. And so he came out and he was, I've never, never in my life ever seen anybody more scared than that. So he was pretty convincing as a reaction to this whole thing. In yeah. my point of view, yeah. But right, I you got know, you. Yeah. You know, I mean, but the skeptic in me, you know, I yeah. don't know if the guy was just high. Or he was just missing a few screws. I don't. I don't know. I mean, but that's what he he ended up having his. Da- he had my dad go into his room, pack all of his stuff, throw it in his gunny sack, and he left. And I never saw that man again. <laughs> Do you recall like what time of night that this happened? It was about to him? two, three o'clock in the morning. So right around what they call witching hour. You betcha. Mm. Yeah. No so devil's hour. The witching devil's hour, hour is the is the midnight. Midnight. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you for correcting me, our resident <laughs> paranormal expert. <laughs> so he thought he had waking he had wake, waking up from a, a dead sleep, and he thought your dad was in there smoking a cigarette. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I couldn't imagine that. That's probably had to have been pretty terrifying for that guy. And you said that he was carrying a gunny sack. It's what all the stuff that he you know kept all the stuff in a gunny sack, right? Yeah, the the guy was. I don't know if he was fresh out of the army, but he had just enough items that you know those old duffel bags from the right. army. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's what it was. It was just an old duffel bag, and everything he owned fit in that bag. So he'd, he'd probably been in the service and doesn't scare too easily. You would think so. Yeah, but so. he, I to this, I mean, I'm staring, I'm looking at this door jam right now, man, and I'm yeah. I'm seeing his face, and he was terrified. I mean, yeah. there's a difference between I saw a spider or something you know, like startled me right. to, I'm, I'm afraid I was about to die. Yeah. And that's, that was what I saw was pure terror, right. pure, pure terror. So you never saw the guy after he left? Never, never, never once. The, my dad and my parents don't even me- remember his name. Like wow. he was <laughs> so gone. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, well, there, you know, there are times, you know, you look, you look at certain people when they are scared and it's like, no, they can't fake that. There's yeah, no, just, there there's was, no way to yeah. do it. Even to this day, I'm, I still think about that, and there's just yeah. I've I've never I've seen hundreds of horror movies. Never have ever ever have I ever seen something like that. Horror movies kind of lost their luster when you got older and you realize everything yeah. was fake. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty jaded now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. I remember just kind of off topic a little bit. My first scary movie that scared the crap out of me was The Howling. Oh yeah. You've seen the, the original <laughs> Howling, how terrifying that is to like an eight-year-old kid. Because <laughs> I still thought that stuff was real. but And then the Evil Dead came along, and that was pretty scarring, too. Yeah, the Evil Dead was pretty good. <laughs> it was gross, but yeah. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Remember the, the scene with the uh, the pencil on the ankle? Oh, yeah. Oh, how they just showed the yeah. close-up yeah. of like grinding it around. It just, oh, yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> All right. Um, so thanks for the story. Yeah. That was, that yeah, was good. good. Um, so, uh, Leah, go ahead and take it away with your story. Your number one top paranormal experience. That <laughs> well, I think that, you know, th- this is what kind of interests me when I was a child. I mean, when I was nine years old, my parents, um, they decided to move to um, Missouri, <laughs> of all places. Um, they, they, they traveled a lot when I was younger because they used to do something for a um, company that used to make uh, crisscross directories. And for people that don't know what that is, it was before computers came along. It was something for the police and the fire department. Say there was an apartment that caught on fire or something like that. The dispatcher could look at these books and say, okay, there's so many residents here. So many of them are 
like, you know, senior citizens. So you're going to have to check on them, make sure, you know, or if the place burns down and nobody gets out, this is how many bodies you got to find, this kind of stuff. So they, you know. It's like we a population all, map, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So they'd have an idea or if like a cop got a call, you know, to a house and it's yeah. a, disma- <laughs> d- a domestic dispute or something like that. Then they would know, okay, this is, you know, so many people in the family, so many kids, right, blah, right. blah, blah, right. that kind of thing. So I was used to moving around a lot, and they decided for two years that they were going to go live on this farm because my grandmother had died. She usually watched me for years. And when she died, my mom didn't take it too well, so dad, you know, they decided, well, we'll, we'll go to Missouri where my grandmother's um, homestead was. And um, the great aunt at that time and her husband had been remodeling the place because it had been – kind of run down over the years and then they had you know and they'd had a fire at one time and they closed off the top part of the house and part of the back of the house was missing when I was a kid we used to go outside and there were three big cement plots where the kitchen and dining room and something else was at the back of the house that had burned down um, so they wanted to remodel it so my parents decided to stay there and help her remodel it because her husband had died a few years before and she was getting old but she wanted to make sure the house was, you know, set up really good so, she, you know, they could give it to the other the grandkids and stuff like that and it would still be there. So my parents started trying to remodel the house. The, the bottom part had been pretty much remodeled and that's what we lived in. The top part had been closed for years and years. They had the, the staircase was like, you know, boarded up. You couldn't get in there or anything. And I had a bedroom in the front of the house. They gave me a bedroom in front of the house. And above me were these two big windows on the second floor, and that was the baby's room. And the baby's room, you know, always had the big windows and everything, and and they had, the aunt told us that there was old furniture up there, that, you know, the whole baby's room was still up there, the rocking chairs, the changing tables, the big, you know, all that kind of stuff was up there. The the chairs, the, all the furniture had stayed up there. Even they had, um, some of the rooms still had straw mattresses in them. That's how long that place had been closed up up there. That's crazy. But every night that I was downstairs, I kept hearing this weird tick, 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 tick on the roof above me. And, you know, I'd, I'd be like, Mom, I don't know what that noise is, but every night I hear it. And she's like, oh, it's rats or it's squirrels or, you know. It's always something It's something always something, easy yeah, her. something yeah. easy with her because my mom, if you knew my mom, she – Really didn't believe believed in, in that. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, believed in nothing. That's all. That's that's the best way to put it. Lord rest so, your soul. Yeah. <laughs> but she, you know, you know, it's always rats, it, it, the wind, something. So you know, and my cousins had come over, and I had twin cousins that were a couple, eh, maybe a year and a half, two years older than me, and they would hear it too. Right. So everybody, you know, everybody kept saying, well, what is that noise up there? What is that? No-? It drives me nuts because I'm the kind of person that you know I want to know what's up there. So finally, our our dads got together and said, well, you know, we got to go up there and remodel anyways. Let's open up the staircase. Let's go up there. Let's find out what is making the noise. It's probably, you know, rats or something, you know, you know something simple. So they tore all this down. We went up. Us, us kids were, oh, you know, this is an adventure. We're going to go upstairs and get to see all this stuff and everything. Break the seal on the door. <laughs> yeah, break the seal on the door. We're the Indiana Jones, you know, kind. Yeah. We're going to go tearing up there. So we all went up there. And it was me and my two cousins and our dads. And, of course, the dads were up there. They had to pry open a window, and it was just it was right. nasty. There was dust everywhere. Um, but we noticed that, you know, with all the dust, there's, there's no little markings on the floor. There's no rat droppings. Right. So, you know, it's, it's not rats up here or, you know, squirrel <laughs> got in or something like that. Well, maybe it's wind. So, you know, they're checking the windows and everything. Everything's boarded up. Um, you can't hardly breathe. It's hot as can be because it's right in the middle of August. Just, you know, we're all sweating like crazy. And they're like, okay, well, let's go over to the baby's room. There must be, you know, maybe there's a window busted out or something. And that's what we're hearing. So we go wandering in there and we're walking down the hallway. And like I said, there's just dust everywhere. We're walking in. And just as we get to the baby's door, the three, the three kids went piling in there first and we froze. Because what we're seeing in front of us is, you know, the, you, you got the dressers and all this stuff off to one side. And there's a crib over there and there's a bassinet. And right in front of the windows is this rocking chair. And it's rocking. Mm-hmm. And we just all froze. Well, 
one of my cousins, the little pussy he was, <laughs> he let out a blood curdling scream, turned around, and he ran all the way out of there, just tripping over himself down the stairs, ran out the door. So this 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 rocking chair was rocking in front of you. Yeah, it was just oh, rocking wow. in front of us, and it, that's what made us front. Yeah, it just. <laughs> and as our dad, and you know, we could feel our dads coming. You know, they're talking. And they walk in behind us because you know they're like, "What the heck happened to him? Why did he take quick. off?" We what? should we should get an old rocking chair and take it with us on investigations. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> see if see if Zach Biggins will let us borrow the devil's chair. There we go. You know, small <laughs> cheap rocking chair. <laughs> but anyway. we're sitting here, we're just froze, and then we could, you know, I heard our dads are like, "What the heck is wrong?" You know, and they come walking in, and they froze because they saw this thing, and it's just sitting there rocking, it's kind of squeaking back and forth, and then it does that kind of, you know, kind of leans real way forward, and then it kind of just. You know, does that really soft rock? Like somebody just stood up oh, wow. out of it. And we're just still standing there, just kind of staring at each other, you know, and staring down at this thing. And I remember me and my cousin turned to each other and we looked at each other and our mouths are open and everything. And just as we turned and looked at each other, we both felt this just freezing cold just oh, went wow. right yeah. through us. And it's just like, and I could actually see my cousins, you know, just. Ugh. You know, as it's, as it's going through. And then behind us, we could see our dads kind of like, oh, And they're, and we're all just kind of staring at each other there for a second. And then you can hear my mom from downstairs. What is the hell did you guys do to Jimmy? What's wrong with him? Why is he running out of here? Like, because I guess he took, took off and he tore through the kitchen where she was at, out the back door, and he ran all the way down the hallway. But the weirdest part, there were these big boot, these big boots. Every once in a while, you'd see a big boot print. And we're like, what's that? Because none of us were wearing boots. Because us kids all had sneakers on. And my dad and their dad had been out in the uh, the cow pen. And they'd been mucking out the stalls. And they had those rubber. <laughs> That's bad luck. Don't you know that? <laughs> Hello there. We have a special spooky. guest. Our special guest, Spooky, everybody. <laughs> She's like, oh, there's somebody here. It's okay. She can stay. <laughs> <laughs> but So it was just footprints walking away. And yeah, out walking out away, the and they weren't. Basically. Yeah, and it was, like, it was like three or four of them, but they didn't go all the way to the stairs, and they didn't, you know, there were just three or four of them down that hallway. We could never figure it out because they were all wearing the, the rubber galoshes kind of thing because they don't, you know, easier to clean off when you get done mucking out the stalls and everything. So nobody could figure out where those come from. We went downstairs and started talking to my mom. And, of course, my mom's like, oh, you guys just did something to Jimmy. You're just scaring Jimmy. You're just doing it. She wouldn't believe any of it. And then about that time, Margie said, well, no, it was probably Grandpa. And, of course, all of us just, you know, stopped and, like, look at her like, are you high? What, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, no, no, don't you know? Grandpa sits up there and waits, waits in the window. And we're like, what are you talking about? And my mom's like, yeah, what are you talking about? What do you mean? She goes, well, don't you know Grandpa used to wait for Jesse James? And I guess my aunt had come over at that time. She started telling us the story that years ago, um, the railroad had come through, and they'd split the, the property in half with the railroad. And they were supposed to build, like, an underpass so Grandpa could take the cattle through. Well, they never did. So he was never happy with the railroad. So when Jesse James had come around, and a lot of them in the area, there was even a, a sheriff from what we heard that would support him. And when they would come in the area, people would trade horses. They, you know, and it was said that even my my great grandmother had fixed dinner for the the James gang at one time. That they used to come up there and and you know they they would just come up to the house and he would wait up in the baby's room because you could see all the way down the uh, driveway. And out into the valley. And he said that they would put a lantern up there, like, you know, like they used to do with, like, the the, rail, the old railroads and stuff like that. They put a lantern up there, and he would know what house or who who was who was available to trade horses or sure, trade. Because back then, you know, electricity wasn't in any of the houses. So if you put a lantern up in the window, you're sitting <laughs> yeah. with somebody. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully the right person. Right. Yeah, so. So, you know, and it was like we just, you know, we just kind of all just stopped. And kind of stared at her. And, it, and, of course, you know, us kids, you know, 9, 10, 11, we're all just like, oh, this is fascinating. We love this stuff. And, you know, for the longest time in my family, it was like me and my dad. Dad experienced it. And dad had a very open mind 
to this kind of stuff. But my mother, uh-uh, completely, never, completely, never clothes no. On it. So I spent a lot of time as a child, you know, I, I was fascinated from all this. But at the same time, you know, when you're a little kid, it's like, oh, I got to, you know, mom doesn't believe. So, you know, I can't, you right, know, yeah. but it was always usually when it came to something like that, it was like me and my dad, it would be like something would happen. And I'd say, well, maybe it's a ghost or something like that. And mom's like, oh, you're just being ridiculous over. It. And me and my dad would kind of just look at each other and go. So basically yeah. your, your, <laughs> your grandfather used to sit up in the in the in the window on the second story right and sitting in his rocking chair and basically his spirit kind of comes back and does the same thing every once yeah because they they said that they had you know marty did show us a picture that it looks like that there are some they've had two different pictures where it looks like somebody's up in the window yeah. and nobody had been in those those rooms up there forever you yeah. know, so now, do you think that's residual or do you think that's uh an, an I, intelligent? you know i <laughs> When I look back on it, I think residual yeah. because that was grandpa's thing to do. But then at the same time, I kind of, you know, I wonder if there wasn't some kind of intelligence to it because, you know, it was like it rocked and then it seemed like it stopped rocking because we walked into the room. Uh, so I, I think it was more residual, you know, when I look at that. But there are times when I wonder if there wasn't something to it because it was just it was the, the timing would have been just you know, so perfect. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but I, I always kind of thought it was residual, but at the same time, you got to wonder. Right. Cause yeah. why would the timing be just so perfect for it to stop just, right yeah. at the, right at that second, you know? Yeah. yeah. Cause it does have a little bit of a residual feel. I mean, with that yeah. repetitive. Yeah. And since, you know, years, you know, everybody's saying, Oh yeah, we have a couple pictures where it looks like somebody's either standing or sitting, you know, like there's a face in the window and nobody ever really before that had really opened it up up there. I guess it's my turn to tell my story. Mm -hmm. right. I hope I recounted <laughs> exactly like I recounted last time before because it, it takes me a minute to kind of get into this thing. Um, mine takes place in a really, really boring, unsupernatural, non haunted place you could ever think of, and that's in an office building like a modern office building, like something that was built probably in the last 40 years. But anyway, so the year is probably around, I want to say 89 or 90. <clears throat> and I was still pretty young, um, living with my parents in Colorado. We just moved down there. I uh, used to work for this company called, I think it was Greenwood. Was it Greenwood Services was the name of this company. It was a janitorial company. And uh, every night I'd show up there with my dad. And I think my sister worked there too for a while. She did because <clears throat> she had met this guy named William that was working there. But Anyways, so we'd show up, and my position was as a janitor, but I played the role of a floater, so they basically sent me to whichever building that I was needed at. So I didn't have a permanent building assigned to me. I didn't have to go to, you know, any specific one. All the buildings were numbered, like one through however many there were, 30-some-odd buildings or something like that. And one night, I get called out to go to this building that had always had vacancies on it. There was one guy that was assigned to it that permanently worked there, and everybody else just kind of floated in and out of it. Well, so I ended up going to this building and I met up with the guy and I mean, immediately when I saw this guy, he was like this long haired guy and he listened to rock and roll music. I'm like, cool, I'm going to get along with this guy because I was a long haired, you know, punk that listened to rock and roll music too. So anyways, um, I walk in and talk to this guy and he kind of goes over really quickly what we're doing. Um, and the way that this building is situated is kind of shaped like an L, like an L shape. In my mind, for some reason, I think that it's, it's kind of, it's got a west wing and an east wing, but after looking at the pictures online, I realized there's like a south wing and a west wing. And then out in the main courtyard between the two wings, it's like this looks like a little golf fairway or something, even though it's, even though it's not. But uh, <clears throat> so he has me go over to basically the west wing on the first floor and start picking up the trash and stuff like that. And the way we did it, we'd always go into these buildings and we'd go through and we'd clear out the trash, empty it all out. And then we'd go back later and we'd vacuum the floors in a backward pattern. That way there's no footprints on the carpet. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I get my trash can and I take off down the West wing and I go all the way to the back and I'm working my way back up to the lobby, uh, emptying trash cans and things and, and nothing really happened. I'm like, eh, hey, cool. You know, I don't know if you guys have been in an office building at night, but it's creepy. Yeah. It don't matter yeah. which one you go into. It's just, 
because it, it's a place of like hustle and bustle and there's always stuff going yeah, on. And it's you, so quiet. Exactly. It's like, if, <laughs> like if when you, when you go somewhere during like uh COVID or something like that and it's empty, you're like, this is weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's how the office building was. It got this weird vibe to it. So uh, after I emptied the trash and stuff like that, I got my vacuum cleaner and I'll go all the way down to the end of the, uh, the West wing on the first floor. And right at the end of the hall, it kind of takes a turn to the left and then it comes back towards the entrance. So it's divided by all these, uh, what do they call them? Cubicles? Cubicles, yeah. Yeah, little cubicle things. So I'm starting all the way back in the kind of the, the end of this little J hook that's built into this building. And so I plug my vacuum cleaner in behind me about 20 or 30 feet and I'm vacuuming backwards from that little J hook part. And I'm going backwards and you kind of do it in this little, you know, kind of like a W pattern and stuff. And then you flip your cord and you turn around, you flip your cord, and then you kind of repeat the line. You just keep going and going. Put and those going. little cool little triangles in there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know how that's done. <laughs> but uh, it's like mowing the lawn with a vacuum cleaner. So I get about two or three rows of these things done. And as I'm, I'm turning around to flip my cord, it's a big, heavy, like a vinyl cord, kind of like this, this XLR cable is. And I turn around and I flipped it behind me. And as I turn my head like that, this thing goes running from one side of the kind of cubicle hallway to the other. And it just darts between the two, right? So it's like the way I described it when I told you about this earlier. Imagine just for the people watching this, if you took a black sheet and you held it out at arm's length and you ran with it, like say to your left, that's kind of what it looked like. Okay. So it's like if this thing ran past this and it was solid, but it had like this fluttering motion to it. Right. And on like, if you could take like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a rhinoceros horn or something like a tusk, mm-hmm. probably about, I don't know, about two feet long and you held it in your left hand and you use that kind of to point the direction that you're going. Okay. It was like that, but it was pointed down, not up. It had that thing like at the end of it when it was running. <laughs> <laughs> and when I flipped that cable, I turned around and flipped the cable and I seen that thing. I'm like, spooky stuff is nowhere in my mind, like right. at all. <laughs> I'm just in there doing my job in some boring office building. And I saw that and I kid you not, it's probably the closest I ever come to pissing myself. <laughs> it scared me that much. I froze instantly. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm at this J hook thing in these little cubicles and I got nowhere to go. And I just and saw thing this was thing behind you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just saw this thing go running past me and I'm like, Oh boy. So here's the kicker though. Where it ran from was the outside wall of the building. And it ran towards the direction that I needed to go. <laughs> okay. So there was no like office on that side. No, it was just a there's wall. nothing. All the walls inside this first floor were made out of cubicles. So oh, wow. this thing went booking past me and it was like making its way. And I, I remember I dropped my vacuum cleaner and I'm like, oh boy. And I can't remember. This is where it's a little bit fuzzy. I don't remember if I unplugged it and rolled it up and got out of there or just left it there. <laughs> I would have left it there. I think I probably did. Because I remember the next thing I know is I'm walking back towards the way that I got to go back to get to the lobby. Because there's no other way to go. Um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of creeping around. I'm, lo- I'm looking in the, the cubicles as I'm walking past them and stuff like that. I'm looking around and the hair is standing up on the back of my neck. I'm scared. Like I am really just genuinely scared. And as I'm walking uh, back up kind of this J shaped uh, hallway here in the middle of that hallway, like running parallel to the, uh, the hallway that I'm going down right. is a big metal HVAC duct. So it's probably two and a half feet, you know, by two and a half feet tall or whatever it is. It's big enough for somebody to fit in. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's got like the acoustic panels like you see in the uh, office buildings for the ceiling. Like a drop ceiling? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm making my way back through there, and I'm like creeping along just, just trying to get out of there. And all of a sudden, there, I hear on top of me just boom, boom, boom. Like three really loud hits. Oh, and, I, and the, the, the ducking. Yeah, right above my head. <laughs> and I thought I was scared to start with. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm done. I took off running. And I went back all the way, ran all the way back out to the lobby and stuff like that. And I'm looking for this dude that I'm working with. And just off the lobby to the uh, the south side and kind of wing of the building, there's this little janitorial closet. And he's in that room, right? He's just chilling in there. And I go walking in there and I'm kind of out of breath and stuff like that. And I don't really know what to say to this guy. It was like, <laughs> how could you? I'm just standing there. I'm just breathing. And I'm kind of looking at him, stuff like that. He's smoking a cigarette. I think he's listening to the radio or something. 
probably coast to coast at the time. <laughs> of all things. <laughs> yeah. But he's smoking a cigarette and I looked at him a few times. And he just looks over me and he goes, you, you saw it, didn't you? I'm like, dude, <laughs> you know about it? He's like, yeah, I know about it. It's like, that's why you can never keep anybody working in here. And you didn't tell me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I would have told you, but then you probably wouldn't have believed me. Uh, and then if you had seen it, you probably would have thought I was just messing with you. <laughs> you know, like it was me that did it. Yeah. <laughs> it obviously wasn't him because you see something like weird like that. You can spot when somebody's faking something, especially when it's, you know, physically solid. Yeah. As yeah. this thing was, but you would have seen like, I'd have seen his feet or his legs or something, you know, something would have went, how hmm. did he get past you to get down to the janitor exactly. box before you did? Yeah. 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 It doesn't make any sense. It couldn't have been him. So anyways, he says, usually you only see it once. And then after that, you hear it and you feel it. He says, I've only ever saw it once when I started working here. Everybody else that's ever been working here, they've only ever seen it once. That's because they leave. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm done. So Goodbye. He, he, right. To add to the story, I don't think I told you about this last time, but he was, he was always been big into paranormal, which I think he was listening to Art Bell that night and stuff. And he told me about this story called the Marfa Lights. Have you ever heard of those? No. Marfa, Texas, I think it is. There's these lights out there that nobody can, we'll do like probably maybe a story on those things, but there's stories, there's uh, lights out there in the distance where people can't figure out what they're coming from and stuff like that. But he was telling me about the Marfa lights and he told me about a couple other experiences that he had and things like that. But anyways, get back on top of it. Um, the second floor of this building on the West wing was completely vacant. So this guy, he did the South wing and he, cause he, there's nothing went on over there. It was like, you know, just cool as a cucumber, just completely calm on that side. So he tells me to go up on the second floor of this building on the West wing and walk down the hallway. This one was different on the second floor because there was actual physical hallway there. It wasn't just cubicles and things. There was actual walls. <laughs> so he tells me he goes up there and just, he says, walk down about 20 feet and then turn your back around and then face back towards the lobby. And then tell me what happens. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, <laughs> I'm not going to chicken out of this. So I go upstairs and at this point it's like, we're not even worried about cleaning the damn building. He's right. like, I don't care. He just, <laughs> he just hangs out there for eight hours a night, empties the garbage. But so I go upstairs and I, I walk down the hallway, turn around and I face back towards the lobby and I wouldn't, I kid you not that same feeling that I got when I first saw that thing, like overtook me like instantaneously. And it's the worst feeling of dread and body chills and shivers and just fear that you could ever imagine in your life. And it does it instantaneously. <laughs> Cause it's right does. there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is, you know, it probably lives up there, but it definitely, it lived on that side of the building for sure. Cause the other side was, like I said, calm, but that was probably the, that, that one experience was like the first time I ever experienced something where I could not deny it and could not explain it away. And it oh, almost man. took, and we did see it. Like, I can't remember. What was that paranormal something? I, I told you about a YouTube video. We saw, I'm, yeah. I'm struggling to remember the name of that, that video, but, um, seen it one other time on that one video where the guy was recording from his, his dresser in his master bedroom. And this thing went past the camera and they didn't say what it was. Didn't acknowledge it really too much, but it was the same damn thing. And to this day, I've never even saw stories about it <laughs> or have well, it, it described kind of in the same wonder, way or anything. It does kind of make you wonder what, what was there before the office building? It's good that you asked because it's in Arapahoe County, Colorado. Arapahoe Indians. Oh, oh there so, you go. <clears throat> but I don't think, and I think there's probably stories about, oh, it was built on an Indian graveyard. You know, the cliche stuff. Like, <laughs> everybody says. Sure. Everything's built on an Indian graveyard. <laughs> but see, I got to thinking about this earlier today when I was like running over, you know, making sure everything got, you know, straightened out for us to do this tonight. And I got to thinking about this. Like a lot of people say it's like, um, you know, the Indians put a curse on this and, they, you know, it's the spirits of the Indians. They're a little chase you off and things like that. Well, what if it's not the spirits of the Indians, but it's all the things that they'd warned us about? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, skinwalkers, all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You know, all their, all their mythological creatures and cryptids and things like that. They say there's evil spirits that roam these land. There's what they called the, the Bigfoot. They had a name for Sasquatch and, and, uh, they called it all this other stuff. Wendigo. But what if it's not, yeah, the Wendigo and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, what if it's not the Indians that are left behind haunting these places? It's all the stuff they told us about. And we were like, eh, whatever, you're full of it. I absolutely, I can yeah. totally get that. I mean, when you, in today's modern world, man, we're so busy 
We don't mm. have the time to slow down to really pay attention to that. And when exactly. you think of Native Americans, man, they were out there under the stars and yeah. in, in the real yeah. nature. So, yeah. of course, they're going to see something that we don't know. Exactly. You know I mean, so I would I would give them the credit 100%. Yeah. You know, I, would, I believe them. Sure. All the so. Native people of North and South America, I mean, they, they knew astrology and all that stuff. Is it astronomy or astrology? I get the two mixed up. Anyways, um, one of them costs you four ninety nine a minute, and the other one doesn't. <laughs> um, so it's astronomy, right? Yes, yeah. it's astronomy. Yeah. Astronomy, but, yes. I mean, they were smart enough to figure out the the movement of the stars and the moon and, and the sun and all that stuff. And their calendars, the Mayan calendar, is still I mean, with thirty seconds within thirty seconds of accuracy to this day. So when these guys they were sitting out there looking at all this stuff, you know, you see all kinds of stuff when you're just sitting out there staring at the at the clouds. You know, staring off into the distance or sitting there waiting. And it wasn't just the peyote that yeah. <laughs> you were talking about. It, it, it probably helped, but yeah, <laughs> it know. helped them see a lot more. Yeah. But when, yeah, when they're out there in the woods and they're hunting deer and stuff like that, and they're just sitting there for hours on end, just watching and listening, being very quiet. I'm sure they've probably seen some stuff. Oh, absolutely. So it just, I, I, I kind of think whatever is in that building is just whatever was there before. You know, the building's just in its way. Yeah. 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 You know? it, it has to do with the land a lot of times. Yeah, so I don't. I don't think the building or the land is cursed. It, that thing was just already there. You know? Yeah, it's it's there. Yeah. And when they built it, it just kind of took up residency, I guess. Sure, and I mean that's it's a good reason why the second floor of that building on that west wing is always empty. They couldn't keep yeah, anybody couldn't, in it. Couldn't yeah. keep anybody in there because whatever the heck is yeah. scaring the the janitor is scaring yeah. everyone else off. But that's it's it's the dumbest place to have some place haunted because Greenwood Village, Colorado, it's it's there's nothing but office buildings. You know, <laughs> that's all that's there. It's just you wouldn't expect anything that weird to be going yeah, on. Yeah, you, you'd expect it to be happening at a cemetery or a mental institution. Yeah, an old house, an old house, like something like that, something yeah. that has some history to it. Not just, you know, oh, look, it's another doctor's office. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Not scary at all not until you get the bill. <laughs> that's, yeah, the that's bill. That's part of the, one of the reasons why I love the paranormal so much is yeah. that you just don't know. I mean, there's so many spectrums out there, so many different doorways that we don't right. really know. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's it's hard to discredit and say this is not real. Exactly. When you have so many accounts that are just like right there in your face, like how do you explain that? Yeah. How do you not explain it? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. Yeah. So it's. That, that's also why you can't be an expert in this field either. Yeah. Exactly. There's no, there's no such you're thing as an expert. Learning. No. Yeah, the you're people constantly that, learning. The people that say I'm an expert at this, it's like, what did you read a book? I mean, come on. <laughs> that's, <laughs> what makes you an expert? You know? See, those are the type of uh, the paranormal investigators that I really like attached to is because when you, when they'll joke around and be like, Oh, professional and then they're like no yeah i'm not an expert at all you can, well you can, i mean you can't be unless you got a ghost in a jar and you can like talk to it exactly and study it, you know? exactly and i i haven't found any of all the stuff that i've done i haven't found anything that consistent to yeah. be like i'm talking to joe schmo john yeah. Jacob yeah. smith you know yeah. well the, about, i would say the closest if if there if there ever was anybody that got close to being a professional or you know, getting to An be expert, expert yeah. it would have to be the Warrens. Oh, yeah. Well, because that's yeah, yeah. what they're, they did. The that's staple. all they did. Yeah. That's the state. But that's what, you know. But then we also have to, you know, they always credited back to, um, oh, the guy that wrote, wrote um, the Sherlock novels and the, those kind of Sherlock novels. Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, that the, guy's uh, name is just slipping my mind right now. I know. That's what, but he he was like one of the first people that started yeah. believing in this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And then you got like even Houdini believed in the afterlife. Oh, yeah. Seances he, and seances yeah, stuff and stuff. Really and you big. got the spiritualism yeah. and all that stuff thrown in. So you know, that's a good idea for a show. We should do like a, the turn of the century kind of a, a, a paranormal talking about paranormal stuff that happened during the turn of the century because it was just all over the place. Oh, like the yeah. Fox Sisters kind of thing with the, yeah, the exactly. first knockings. And yeah, what do they call oh, it? Yeah. The ectoplasm pictures? Ectoplasm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean the, the, the gooey stuff that looks like it's the coming cotton. out of something? Yeah, the yeah, cotton. The cotton and pig guts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it was. But, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. I want to yeah. thank you for uh, sitting here and checking it out. It's been, I don't know, 43 minutes or something like that. Probably won't edit much out of this video, but uh, thanks, Josh, for coming by and, and swinging Anytime. over here and sitting here and telling and we'll, ghost stories we'll, with us. We're, we're going to be working more with uh, the Greg Castle stuff and Josh here because he's going to be joining us for 
Yeah. A few, yeah, I'm, few investigations. You'll, and, you'll be our, our guest expert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, actually. I've always wanted to do the investigating part and, and really get into a lot more instead of just the stories. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. We, we love doing the stories, especially the true ones. Um, and I'm very grateful to Sean. You know, he, he gave me this opportunity, but um, like I told you guys uh, the other day, um, he, he's just been a really big part of my life. He was, right. he, he helped me out when I really needed it. And so this is just me just yeah. trying to pay it forward, man. He, he's, right. a, he's an amazing person. So. And it helps that you're really interested in this kind of stuff too. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to yeah. hang out with us. Yeah. It probably Definitely. wouldn't be so easy if he'd asked you to come down and trim some flowers with him or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm good. Thanks for what you've done, but we're good. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll uh, catch you on the next video.